Welcome to Dark Sorcery. I'm Alfredo Martinez, and I have with me the one and only Travis Majus. Good to have you back on, man. Peace, peace. Good to have you. Or thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, got a big response having you on last time. Subscribers loved it. Um, but yeah, man, um, last time uh, we were we were talking uh, a bit about how the conscious mind and the subconscious mind, um, you know, relate and interact. Um, one thing I do wa want to uh, speak about, I thought it was interesting, was the... Um, you had mentioned that the, the four lobes of the brain represent four angels. Can you go ahead and, and uh, speak a bit on that? Sure. So as I go deeper and deeper into my occult study, I realized everything that's taught in the occult is symbolic. And mm -hmm. it's symbolic in order to teach us that we're trying to learn about something that isn't concrete whatsoever, but the best way to learn about it is by relating different symbols, right? Um, this is why I study astrology, the tarot and Kabbalah, because the more symbols that you have in your library of correspondences, that's when you get a clearer picture of what you're actually dealing with. So in this particular case, so we talk about four lobes of the brain. What I've learned is that the numerical aspect of the occult it's going to point directly to a specific thing. Ones represent the unity of uh, as above, so below. Two represents the duality of consciousness and matter. Uh, three represents what the ancients called uh, the gunas, right? Uh, activity, passivity, and neutrality, G-O-D, generator, operator, destroyer. Fours are going to rep represent the ma manifested elements. So really, anytime you see four and a fours, it's going to be talking about the elements. When you talk about the four angels, the four corners, four directions, anything fours is pointing to that specific thing. Yeah, you had mentioned about when you when you do the LBRP and you're contacting uh, four archangels, you're actually stimulating four different parts of your brain and I guess activating them. So, yes, and I say yes hesitantly because these aspects of ourselves that we are attempting to tap into have always existed. It's just we're not conscious of them. So in, in doing rituals like this, start to expand into the place where we are conscious of them. So we could say stimulating. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you had and also mentioned... The reason I'm saying all this is... Go ahead. Go ahead. The reason I'm saying all this is because... Like I said, the more that I get into the occult, the more I realize it's, it's not about anything material. It's pointing at something that's unmanifest. I, try to, I do explain some things in terms of the physical, like the actual parts of the brain, but it, it can just as easily be debunked because it's not physical. We're pointing at something symbolic. Right. Right. And, you know, like you were saying, you know, as above, so below, you know, the, uh, the ancients also, especially the Native Americans, uh, had taught that everything, everything has a spirit in it, and everything that course, mm -hmm. everything corresponds, everything, everything physical has a etheric counterpart to it. I guess is a is a absolutely yeah. And so the trick is to interact with the etheric counterpart to then manifest in the physical realm. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like I said, what we're dealing with is something that is unmanifest, mm -hmm. um, like with that duality, right? There's consciousness first, and the matter is an aspect of consciousness. That's why matter has to follow consciousness, because consciousness is much more, uh, it's much more. Mm -hmm. um, so in that gradient, there, there's, a, there's a level of layers, right? Everyone's heard of the astral plane and the physical plane. Some people have heard of the mental plane. Even people have heard of the etheric plane. But these are ancient concepts. This goes way back before Crowley and, and, and Europe and as written history. But there are graduated layers between matter and consciousness. Matter is the most dense layer, of course. Um, it's also the last layer. 
So let's just, as a crude example, we can say that consciousness might think the number one. So that's downward to matter, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to become on the mental plane first. It's going to be a concept. Then it's going to go down to the astral plane, right? It's going to start to form some type of emotional push behind it. Then it's going to manifest down to the etheric plane. That's when it's going to start to collect um, form and substance. Now that process right there causes a deeper echo in the physical plane and boom, now we have something material. So what all that to say, the process begins way up here and it ends way down here. So to try to change the down here, we have to go as high as we can. Mm -hmm. in order for it to manifest the way we want in Malkuth. Yes. Mm -hmm. You had mentioned that the uh, pineal gland has 72 chakras in it, which also corresponds to, in the Goetia, 72 spirits, but mm -hmm. they're actually parts of you. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, can you go ahead and break so, that down? So, again, go ahead, go ahead. Again, most all of the is a symbolic art. The art is actually decoding the the metaphors. That's what magic is. Met metaphors move the mind. Mm -hmm. um, anything about metaphors, that'd be a great idea. But the, the numbers are what points to the answer, just like in the Bible talks about 144,000 will be saved that right. if you look at history that, that's that's a that's not realistic but it's a metaphor that number four four plus one nine so just like 72 seven plus two points to the nine we're talking about yes saw talking about the etheric plane right? right the reason that this is connected to the pineal is because that is a the pineal gland the third eye is a symbolic representative of how we access the etheric plane. And we do that through imagination, through visualization. Right. So with that being the not, with that being the imagination, the etheric plane, um, and the 72 entities, mm -hmm. I mentioned before that there's these graduated levels. Mm -hmm. At the top is what we would call God, most high, whatever you wanna use as far as our conception can go. Now, as it comes down, it must be diluted because, like I said, it's, it's not manifest and it never will be manifest. So as it as we get through manifestation, parts of God has to be fragmented off, has to be, um, you know, it, it is so boundless and so unlimited that it can't possibly be a form. So, so it's just imagine a, a rocket ship as it's blasting up into space and the little pieces have to come off and then finally it's just that little tip that goes up there right and the same thing back down Th that's what's happening pieces have to be fragmented and fractured off because from our point of awareness we can't conceive of all that so those fractionated aspects everyone has access to because everyone is those mm -hmm. but we call them the goetia we call them angels. We call them any grimoire that has a bunch of different spirits in it. All it's teaching you how to do is to channel your awareness into a single point. And it can be any one of those 72 points or however many number you want to use. Mm -hmm. But th that's what I mean when I say it's all you. That's a good way of breaking it down um, as opposed to other explanations. Now, let me ask you this. Um, Carl Jung once said, that the mind alternates between sense and nonsense and not between right and wrong. Would you agree with that principle? Absolutely. Because, because... Now, the reason I mention it is because, I mean, what, what's right and wrong here in the West will not be the same right and wrong, let's say in China, depending on your location on the earth and depending on your timeline. Right. So would you agree with that? Absolutely. In fact, this is, we're getting closer to the true explanation of what evil actually is. See, good and evil, right and wrong, are not absolutes. They are uh, subjective, time and to the place. So if there's a different time or different place, 
like you said, the definition is going to change. Now, according to Dion Fortune and Mystical Kabbalah and also W.E. Butler, who was an associate of hers, but different magical schools, when they defined evil, what they talk about is something that is out of place. So say, for example, back in biblical times, people had rules to follow because of the time and the place they were in. Bring some of those rules to pray is evil because it doesn't make any sense and it hurts people for no reason. Right. I guess evil you could is say, not like a person. Well, I guess what you could say right and wrong is what works and what doesn't work for that specific time yes. and for that culture, I guess would be another way of saying it. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's why we've got so many different deities from so many different places, yet they all represent the same things, just with different names. Yeah, some of them were for a certain time period. Um, yes. Now, you had mentioned about um, a time when uh, you had some warts on your hands, and then they, they began to just fall off because you did a combination of the LBRP, and then you did a chakra meditation after that. Can you go ahead and, and explain that? Yes. So this was in, I want to say, 2018 or so. And the, the period of 2017, 18, and 19, that's when I did most of my Goetia videos and things like that. That's when I was really, really focused on doing rituals, 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 rituals. And that's where I got a lot of my experience from because I'm trying to analyze and learn how this all works. Now, at the time, I did not know how it worked, but I knew it did work. So um, fast forward to today, now that I have a much deeper understanding of where a lot of these rituals came from and what the purpose was then and what the purpose is now, I realized that of all magic is what the, the ancients called dharana, which means extreme focus, right? Uh, focus that penetrates beyond the imagination into the mental plane. That's how you grab a hold of something and bring it back down. Mm -hmm. So during LBRP and the chakra meditation what did was I tapped into such a deep state of focus that I was able to bring my body into alignment, the cells of my body into alignment. And this shouldn't sound too far fetched or crazy because the yogis and swamis were doing this and are doing this all the time. This is what we strive to do with our magic. We strive to affect the physical plane. And the way that it's one way that it's done is by tapping into extreme focus. One pointedness is what they called it. Yeah, you had mentioned that uh, in during this process, uh, the ether is sensitive to consciousness, emotion, and raw energy. Yes. And a combination of those three is actually what changed your your physical got into the physical and changed it to where you're you know you, what was there is not there anymore you know um I, you had mentioned that it says that you had stated there is no separation of mind and matter only degrees of vibration yes everything is vibration right and 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 then you had mentioned that in the Kabbalion it says he who understands the principle of vibration has grasped the scepter of power. Mm -hmm. That is very true. Yes. Um, now that makes me think of the hermetic principle number three. Nothing rests. Everything moves. Everything vibrates. Which also corresponds to the fact that everything is in a constant state of change. I mean, if, you, if, if someone likes to be nostalgic and living in the past, well, then the universe does not reward that and they're going to have a really hard time. Would you agree with that? Like what we just talked about evil, right? Being yeah. nostalgic like that is stuck in the a place that's not here and a time that's not here. Therefore, it's not useful or appropriate. Mm. Exactly. Exactly. Um now, I like how you mentioned the person we we're talking about. You were talking about the ego. Speaking of the ego, um, the personality of the conscious mind is the ego. And then you had mentioned that the ego is the blind and jealous God, which made me kind of think of Jehovah in a sense. Um, yes. Now, explain why the ego is starts to work against you once you start to uh, realize certain truths about the mind and subconscious mind. 
Okay, so the ego is what we call Jehovah. It's also what people call the Demiurge. And what this presence, this entity, this this uh, mask is, so again, reference these layers, right? Because you're talking about vibration and, and all this other, you know, all these things that relate to the same concept. We've got consciousness at the very top, then those layers down beneath it. Now, just below the ultimate consciousness, this is why they call the Demiurge the, uh, the false god, right? Because it's the highest point that our consciousness can go if we want to maintain our humanity. Now, what this ego actually is, the way that the ego knows itself, this is why they say blind and jealous god, this is why the Demiurge was blind, etc. Um, because it can only see down, it can't see up. What I mean by that is the ego only knows that it ex exists based on the data that we receive from our five senses. So that right there means that you are not this ego. This ego is something that developed simply as you went through your experience in a physical body. What we actually are is way beyond this thing. So when we start to realize what we are, we start to realize that this thing doesn't exist. So it must do everything it can through those five senses to keep what you actually are where you are, which is under it. Otherwise, it no longer will exist. Mm -hmm. So it kind of goes into a fight or flight response, there, knowing that it's being threatened, that it can no longer be like any. What's that? Like any living creature would. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was interesting. Also, um, the subconscious mind, you had mentioned that the subconscious mind communicates through symbols, is impacted by repetition, and is deeply affected by trauma or an emotional spike. Now, those three things, you can alter the subconscious mind that way. Um, but explain a bit about trauma. Mm -hmm. How trauma affects the subconscious mind. Okay. So, we talked about how consciousness and energy and emotion, the etheric plane. So, the subconscious mind is what science we refer to as the etheric plane and the astral plane and the mental plane. They just group it all together with unconscious mind or subconscious mind. Right. So the reason that trauma or these emotional spikes move it is because that's us tapping into what we know of as the astral plane specifically. Mm -hmm. um, the astral plane, you may have heard at, or read that the astral plane is the plane of emotion, raw, pure emotion. Now, that doesn't mean like the astral plane is where people are crying and, and, and laughing or whatever. What that means is emotion is movement without logic right because logic belongs to the mental plane right. this it's, it's pure movement pure 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 prana mm -hmm. pure energy right so when we feel a certain way that's what drives us to do things very rarely do we just think ourselves into a situation our state changes based on how we feel so unless very we tap into that layer it'll be very very difficult to make something happen yeah, and there's there's some people that they don't they don't bother, most people don't bother trying to alter their subconscious mind. They they go about their lives, you know, doing mundane things, working the nine to five, or just going through the motions and being depressed, maybe putting themselves down. But the thing is, um, let's see, where did I write it down at? Um, if you about the subconscious mind, if you don't control the subconscious mind, then it's controlled by the media commercials mm. etc subliminal messaging via advertising basically you'd become a corporate puppet is that correct right there's a quote that says that if i know you better than you know me i can influence you but if i know you better than you know you then i can control you <laughs> and like you said most people don't want to adjust their subconscious mind this is why shadow work is a mandatory part 
of advancement in magical practice, not optional, it's mandatory. Because if you never deal with these subconscious influences, like you said, the media, music, everything around you will influence you to do things without you being logically aware of it, which also is a part of this ego, this demiurge, this false god. Yeah, and no doubt the corporate media is targeting the subconscious mind in everything they do to fill their pockets. And people <laughs> just, you know, it makes me wonder, like, especially religious programming, you know, they, they constantly hammered in their head, like, you must give, you know, God says give, and you'll be blessed. If not now, in the afterlife, you know, they constantly hammer that in. And people will give their life savings, they end up losing their house, they, you know what I mean? All yeah. to line their pockets. So they're, they're, it's very, very true. It, it's it can be sad to think about right especially like even as as being an occultist i i study the east a lot and the east talks about how important compassion is and i do have compassion for the fact that there are people who don't know any better and they get manipulated which is a huge reason why i do what i do because i believe that the more that a person understands about how they operate the right. better they can fear in life yeah i agree um now you yeah you uh definitely stress the importance of balancing your chakras by doing kundalini um uh, shadow work meditation regular study and practice um visualize what you want to manifest very often um the visualization part is very true but at the same time you have to do the magical work uh, so many people like to visualize, maybe do certain chants, um, certain mantras, but they don't get down to doing the the spiritual magical work. And it explain how important that is, rather than just visualizing. You have to do the magical work, otherwise, it's not really going to go anywhere. Right, right. Otherwise, it's not. It's not. It, it may, if you're lucky, right? right. Um, once in a while, <laughs> but that's not reliable. No. No, so, if you need things to happen, yeah, go ahead. We're, we're dealing with alignment here. We're dealing with alignment. And alignment is, is also a major part of advancement on this path. We've all had coincidences. We've all had synchronicity, right? And and you know from your practice, like the, mo the deeper you get with your magical practice, the more these synchronicities keep happening. Exactly. That's a result of being in alignment. So the question is alignment with what? Well, again, I reference these layers uh god mental plane astral plane etheric plane physical plane right the the will has to be solid focused and in alignment and when it is all those planes move in unison they move together and that's how you're practicing magic really develops like a powerful lifestyle so if we have these visualizations and we have these these emotional desires and whatnot the physical ritual now becomes important because that is you physically coming into alignment with what you astrally did mentally did and etherically did mm -hmm. and, and also now, it's go ahead as an advanced magician if you've been doing this for years then of course there are some parts of the ritual that you don't have to do right there are sometimes you can just think it right or feel it yeah. right. but as someone who's still beginning you have to condition yourself into alignment yeah, and, and uh, the magical part uh, doesn't necessarily manifest to shooting fireballs out of your hands. It comes by natural means. And some people are right, in denial right. of that. You know, and, and like we're, you're saying, you know, the, the synchronicities, you know, they, they add up more and more the more you do the magical work. But it's going to manifest through through natural means in Malkuth. Right. Because how else will it, right? Yeah. I, I think it's I again, so. again the the corporate programming of the subconscious mind where they oh it's gonna manifest with rings of fire and stuff like that no that's not how it works right it doesn't work that way then it's not real it's not magic right but that's the thing it's all about these metaphors and, and aligning our our how we see the world in a way that serves us everything is magic if you know what you're looking at mm -hmm. i mean look it, we're 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 nowhere close to each other a real-time conversation uh, yeah i see what you mean 
Um, I guess Alistair Crowley described the etheric plane as the vision of the machinery of the universe. Yes, right. If you really think about what we've been saying here, like it, it makes sense. It's a vision of the machinery of the universe. And we think of the word machinery, looking at matic, some type of organized process, right? The machine is an organized process that, that makes things happen. So the machinery of the universe, the organized principles of the universe, it, it begin, everything that's ever manifested in the physical plane first began as a concept, as a vision, everything. Nothing just popped out. Yeah, you don't just get up and go to the store. You, you feel like, okay, well, yeah, I need food. I feel hungry. I, I, I feel mm -hmm. like I need to do this at this time. I'm not going to have time to bother. So based on my emotions, I'm going to get up and go to the store. Mm -hmm. And and if you if you if you turn your focus inward, you'll realize that that whole process is constantly happening. That's the machinery of the universe. So why not analyze it, break it down, understand it, and 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 refine it so that it serves me. Yeah, exactly. Where attention goes, energy flows. Uh, yes. Which is why you stress very much on when you're doing a chakra meditation to focus on that one chakra that needs work. And you focus on that for so long, you'll start to see changes. Yes. Um, and... Oh, you had mentioned that the, the job of the conscious mind is to cock block. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You go ahead and break that down for the subscribers. Yeah, yeah. So again, just like we talked about with the Demiurge, we talked about yeah. the ego, all that belongs to the conscious mind, Brown. The whole thing is that we find ourselves in this strange predic predicament of distance simply because we are conscious of the body, but not everything else. In fact, the subconscious mind doesn't even realize that other people exist. So if we did have a realization of what this experience actually was, we would no longer be having this experience, right? Another quote says, what was it? When you're alive, don't really worry about death because when you're dead, you're not alive anymore. And when you're dead, don't worry about life because you're no longer alive. Like keep your attention where it is. To be worried about death is a, a somewhat of a waste of our energy. Um. But anyways, when you when you expand to the point that your objective experience crosses into the subjective experience, mm. you, you cannot have an objective experience anymore. In other words, the ego disappears, the conscious mind disappears. Uh -huh. And just like we talked about the ego, it's going to do everything it can to stay here. Yeah, that's why that's why the conscious mind cox block cock blocks against spirituality and magic and all that stuff, because once you start down this path, the destination is the death of that false God. It, just like the Bible says, the devil knows his time is short, right? So he's doing everything he can. <laughs> Once you start this path, the devil knows, or I should say the ego knows ego, that yeah. Yeah, it's, it's time is done. <laughs> so, yeah. Don't, done. don't be, yeah. The sub, uh, don't be used by it. Use it. Yes as it's supposed to be. Uh -huh. And there's another thing, like, I don't like to think of these things as enemies. Uh, I, I don't like to think of anything in the universe as, as anything that's my enemy, because that, that's a lie. Um, this ego, this, this demiurge, this Yahweh, whatever, right. it, when, when you're asleep, ignorant and unconscious, it is your master. But as you begin to wake up, it must be your servant. That's why I said also mm -hmm. that it's also the, represented as the Sphinx. This is what the Sphinx is. And once you master the Sphinx, you master the material plane, which should be the, not the goal, but a byproduct of a goal of your magical experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very well said. Um, yeah, it looks like that's about it for right now. Um, now you also offer some magical uh, services. Uh, you go ahead and explain a bit about those. Yes. So 
the type of person who usually gravitates towards my videos are, are people who really want to understand themselves and understand what magic is all about. And, and deep down inside, they have some type of pain they're trying to resolve that nothing else seems to fix. Now, what I do is I, I do a lot of consultations. I help people to see themselves and see where the issue is and the most efficient way to deal with it. Like, I don't, I, I know a lot of people expect all of, you just get some crystals or some sage or something and your problem will go away. And that may be true, but it's a temporary fix. So I like to help people see the root of the issue so it can be fixed and not be an issue anymore. So I do consultations um, and I also teach classes. Um, I have a class where I teach people how to safely work with any spirit, right? Because I, I found certain fundamental principles about magic that are universal. So I teach a class teaching people how to work with spirits and many, many, many people are getting results that they didn't think were possible. Um, so consultations, I teach how to summon spirits. And then I also have a class that, um, basically teach a shadow work, how to look into yourself, see where the root of your issues were, um, different things that may have developed in childhood, parents. And again, like I said, shadow work is mandatory because before you start summoning demons and working with angels, you gotta solve those root issues. Otherwise, they're going to come out in your rituals. You're gonna get mad at somebody and try to hex and do all these jars and all this other stuff, not realizing that you're teaching the universe how to treat you. That's why treat others how you wanna be treated, not just because you wanna be a nice person, but this is a reflection, right? And how the way that you go about dealing with other people, like I said, the subconscious mind doesn't realize that anyone else exists. Right. So when you're out here cursing people, doing hex and all this other stuff, you're teaching reality how to treat you. Yeah. But that's what I do. I offer one on one sessions. I offer how to work with any spirit, period, which, by the way, you have a uh, few videos in that. Right. And then. I also teach people how to tap into the how to work aspect. Okay. All right. Well, for everybody who's watching, uh, I will have all of Travis's uh, links to all this stuff below in the video description. I encourage you to go to his YouTube channel, subscribe. If you think that what we've been talking about is interesting, check out his other videos. Go to his Instagram, you know, um, all his other social media links and his consultations and stuff like that. I'll have all that below this video. You check that out click it uh travis thanks once again for coming on it's been uh, a lot of fun yes thanks I, I enjoy this experience so thank you yeah and everybody who's watching like and subscribe to dark sorcery